Thank you, everyone, for subscribing to Infinitely Productions. We appreciate your feedback as always, so please always leave a comment below to let us know how you feel. Now, we'll be going over a criminal underworld figure that many of you have may not ever heard of. In Mafia Prince, he is called Mickey Coco. However, other sources may use the name Michael Mikey Coco Cefeli. We will use birth terminology, so when we start this video, we'll first introduce him the way the Inquirer has him as Mikey Coco. Welcome to the city of Philadelphia during the 1970s and 80s, where a crime has risen to the unknown heights that have ever existed in the criminal underworld. The city, especially in the South Philadelphia region, was the home region of many of the Italian Mafia figures, such as the godfather Angelo Bruno, his underboss, Philip Testa, also known as the Chicken Man. Bruno, also known as the Docile Don or Gentle Don, may have been known for that moniker for not whacking his nemesis, Antonio Mr. Mix Polina. However, that did not dispute that there were killings under the Angelo Bruno regime. Case in point. Before the city of Philadelphia lose two godfathers in 1980, such as Angelo Bruno and Philip Chicken Mantesta, since many people were trying to overthrow the leaders of the rank because everybody wants to be the godfather. Before Angelo Bruno's death, there were many under killings under his regime. For instance, Michael Mickey Coco Cefeli was known for being a drug dealer amongst the south corners of 10th and Wolf Street. Frank Monte will be the future consigliere of Nicky Scarfo, aka Nicodemo Scarfo's regime. Frank Monte was loyal to Nicky Scarfo, but he also did not play when it came to anyone involving his family members. According to the rumors in the streets of the criminal underworld, Mickey Coco, or Mikey Coco, had sold drugs to his child. Now, in the worlds in the Costa Nostra, one of the things that you do not do is not only mess with the Nate guy's family members, but the one thing is you don't do is sell them drugs. As you see across the screen, 10th and Wall Street, it looks completely different as it did nearly 40 to 50 years ago. Around this corner, there are many bars, shops, and street market pedestrians among this corner. As you see amongst this corner, imagine you see a bar in 1979 on Tuffman Wolf Street. Over here is the crime scene of a murder that you may not even heard of, especially if you're not from Philadelphia. Now, let's go over the quick scenario of Michael, Mikey Coco Cefeli, or Mickey Coco. The May Man. We'll be starting off with one of our sources from Philip Leonetti's Mafia Prince, and then we will use his voice to discuss his scenario of this contents. Right after we killed Judge Helfond, my uncle went to Phil, Testa, and Angelo Bruno and told him he wanted to kill a guy in South Philadelphia named Mickey Coco, who had sold drugs to the son of Frank Bonte who was a made guy and had been close with my uncle since they were kids. Drugs were against the rules and my uncle detested drug dealers. Therefore, the reigning godfather, Angelo Bruno, sanctioned the murder of Mickey Coco. Philadelphia soldiers Salvatore Salvi Testa and Salvatore Chucky Merlino were approved to be the assassins to murder Coco and this will recruit them to be official made members of the Philadelphia crime family. According to Philip Leonetti's Mafia Prince, in order to be a made member, 
you had to be 100% Italian and be involved in a murder. Therefore, Testa and Marlino took the position and made Frank J. Monte proud. Mickey Coco, real name Michael Cefeli, violated a serious rule in the Costa Nostra. In the world of the mob, drugs were prohibited. Any made guy was caught with drugs or selling drugs to another made member or their families was marked for punishment. That punishment would be death. Therefore, Michael Mickey Coco Cefeli was marked for death. January 4, 1979, Thursday at 10th and Wolf Street. Michael Mickey Coco Cefeli awaits his fate. Here's from the Philadelphia Inquirer report. Man gunned down in South Philadelphia bar by Dwight Ott. A man was gunned down last night in a barrage of pistol fire in South Philadelphia bar and about 20 patrons watched the execution style murder, police said. Police said the two men were wearing ski masks into Priori's bar at 10th and Wolf Street at 6.45 p.m. and walked within five feet of the bar stool where Michael Cefeli, 35, was sipping beer. Witness told police the gunman opened fire with revolvers and riddled Cefeli's upper body with 13 bullets wounds. The men fled on foot while barmaid tried to comfort Cefeli who had fallen to the bar room. Police arrived quickly and took Cefeli to Methodist Hospital where he was dead on arrival at 6.50 p.m. Police said that Safeli lived at 1928 East Pass Young Avenue. Neighbors knew of him as a man named Mike who worked at Michael's Flowers at Floor Shop at 1926 East Pass Young Avenue and that he drove a truck with a New Jersey's liquor license plate. A witness to the shooting said Safeli is a nickname, was Coco, and that he lived on Oakman Road in Clementon, New Jersey, was married and had two daughters. Here's a report from the Philadelphia Daily News. Friday, January 5th, 1979, article named Mask Duo Kills Pusher in South Philadelphia Restaurant by Jack McGuire. It was a stone contract he was set up, a detective said, after Michael Mickey Coco Cefeli was shot and killed inside a South Philadelphia restaurant by two ski mass men at 645 last night. Cefeli, 39 of Oakman Drive of Clementon, New Jersey, was dead on arrival at Methodist Hospital. A police source described him as big in drugs, a money guy a major wholesaler of quaaludes, a mind-altering prescription drug. A source close to the investigation said Cefeli was probably killed because he was a federal informant or was about to be arrested by federal agents and someone feared he would talk. Barmaid Patsy Allen, 25, talked with Cefeli only moments before the two ski masked men, each with a handgun, opened the door to the Priori's restaurant. 10th and Wolf Streets stepped inside and emptied their guns into Cefeli as he sat at the bar, wounding him 13 times from head to groin. Allen referred to the victim as Mickey Coco the nickname given as he was growing up around 8th and Moore Street. She was slated to go on duty at 7 p.m., relieving Linda Bonserra, 21, of one of the co-owners of the family-owned business. Alan says Cefeli was in the bar about 20 minutes before he was slain. As she stood talking with him, he told her two guys are meeting me for dinner. Vincent Priori, one of the owners and a cook, greeted Cefeli and brought him a beer, then left to buy whiskey from the, for the bar. 
then left to buy whiskey for the bar. The glass of beer, no more than a sip or two, taken remained on the bar along with Cefeli's cigarettes and change. I was standing there talking to Mickey, Alan said. Then I noticed Linda was getting busy, so I moved to go behind the bar and help her. Alan said she was several feet from Cefeli. When the two armed men entered the bar without a word, they walked up to Cefeli as he turned towards them and began firing at point-blank range. The bullet spun Cefeli around the bar stool and he flopped to the floor. Alan got cold towels and pressed them against his chest in a futile effort to stem the flow of blood. Police Sergeant Robert Alf Shelter, 4th District, was the first officer on the scene. He gave first aid and he was relieved by rescue squad members who took Cefeli to the hospital. Lena Bocera, 21, Linda's business band, also a cook in the restaurant, had departed shortly before the shooting to pick up their young daughter. Bonsera said he knew Cefeli as Mickey Coco and that he did not frequent the restaurant. If he comes to once a year, it's a lot, Bonsera said. Bonsera had picked up the child and was returning to the restaurant to pick up his wife. He said he was driving around the block looking for a parking space when he heard shots. It was the end of Michael Miki Coco Cefeli. Whereabouts of his remains is undisclosed to the public, so this will conclude our story on the life and death of Michael Miki Coco Cefeli. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe to our channel and check out more of our content. Feel free to give your feedback and suggestions on what we should do next in the comments. This is Infinite Lee Productions. We love ya.